Welcome to The Curated Craftsman, a podcast where we'll learn about the hands, head, and heart behind creative entrepreneurs just like you. Kate Cook is the artistic drive behind Asphalt Canvas Custom Art and your host for this conversation about art, business, and belief. Welcome to the Curated Craftsman Podcast. My name is Kate Cook, and I am the artist and owner of Asphalt Canvas Custom Art. And today I have my husband here with me. His name is Morgan Cook. He is the owner of AC Speed Shop, and he helps me tremendously in my business. We're going to talk a little bit today about the qualities of a craftsman. We're going to talk about how the Bible defines craftsmen and then the secular definition of craftsman, which is what um, we can find in like the dictionary. So we're gonna have sign painters, we're gonna have welders, we're gonna have um, maybe even some beer makers, some metal workers, and we'll, we'll mention more if I can think of a couple more people. Oh, we have a leather worker hopefully coming out or coming on that podcast as well. And here is my husband, Morgan. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And if it goes well, I'd love to have Morgan on here every now and then as well, periodically. And maybe we can uh, have a group discussion about different things that even you guys um, give us insight on or, or tips for. Topics. Like, topics. Yeah. Today, I would really want to talk about what we feel defines the term craftsman. So mm-hmm. the qualities of what a craftsman has like the person the personification of a craftsman so yeah it's a very unique term that gets thrown around a lot these days yeah definitely i think the term craftsman it is not revealed as like a a term it's it's a title that is thrown around very loosely but Mm -hmm. i think that especially like with what we're doing here with the curated craftsman like the whole point of that is finding these people that embody the word craftsman in, ter- in kind of the research for this first show, I, t- I looked up the actual dictionary term of a craftsman. A craftsman is a person who practices or is highly skilled in a craft, an artist or an artisan. And then the Merriam-Webster dictionary term is a person practices a trade and or handicraft as a job. So I thought that was an interesting concept, hmm. like... Are they only a craftsman if they have a job doing that craft? Could you be like a hobby man and be a craftsman? I think you could definitely do both. Okay. Yeah, like, like for instance, your dad, for example, when of course when he was in the Air Force, that was his job. He was an airplane mechanic, which he considered his craft, but he also enjoyed many other things that yet yeah, he may not have seen himself as a craftsman. Others did when it came to woodworking or building cars you name it. okay and so that's interesting that's funny that you say that because yeah i think my dad would be the first to say like i'm not a craftsman i would venture to say there's actually a collection of people that i would say mm-hmm. defines themselves as not a craftsman like it's almost like a term of pride and they're trying to like be humble at it but like really they are a craftsman, but they just don't want to say it because they're human. They're, they're humble. And a lot of craftsmen that I've ever, pretty much all the craftsmen I've met are humble in their trade. So maybe that's a characteristic. Almost to a negative flaw. Yeah. Their humility is almost what defines them as part being a craftsman. Would that be right? Would you say that's kind of true in the people that you know of as a craftsman? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So humility is one of them. Also, when you said that about my dad being like a craftsman and skilled in many things... I would venture to say that that person is more of a renaissance man, more than a craftsman. I'm not well versed into using the term renaissance man because that always associates that to me like with Shakespeare era. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think a renaissance is skilled in many things. But also I've heard it skilled in many things, not a master of one. Yeah, but there's a lot to that quote that gets left off. Would you say that a craftsman is skilled in one thing, like highly, highly skilled in one thing? I, well, yes, because they're practicing their craft. Okay. Now, they can be highly skilled and be a craftsman in numerous things, but when you say you're a craftsman, you're usually talking about one craft you do. I see what you're saying. Like your dad's a 
back to your dad. He's he's very good at woodworking, so that would be a craft. So he's a craftsman at woodworking, but when he goes to fabricating something for a car, right. he's very skilled at that. So therefore, he's being a craftsman, and that's a craft as well. Okay, okay, I can see that. Well, and also I think like to be a skilled tradesman or a tra a, a craftsman, you have to have a lot of tools in your belt to succeed at doing one thing. So, like, for instance, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of, like... You have to know a bunch of different skills to form one craft. Yeah. So, like, therefore, you... you the whole term of, like, rena did you look up the term Renaissance? Yeah, renaissance? so, according to Merriam-Webster, Renaissance man, this is just the first one that came up, a person who has wide interest and is an expert in several areas. Man, that's, that's really good food for thought. So, I mean, I guess we'll have to, like, leave it up to the people... As far as if they think a tradesman yeah. and, a, and a renaissance man are the same thing. And I just want to put it out, when I say craftsman, I'm talking about women too, so. Oh, yeah. We don't. all know this. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so let's see. We have humility is a, is a trait. And then being highly skilled at, would you say, multiple things? Oh, yeah. Okay. But multiple things, but multiple talents and skills right but they're used to practice one task to accomplish a goal yes they're a combination of skills to master one product or one task okay. or one job for example yeah. you're you're an artist right just because you can draw with a pencil doesn't mean you're an artist right like, you also know how to, where to place the shading and the colors and where to go light to dark. And yes. you know how to apply the colors in the right order and mix them to get certain shades and what color to put down first and the color over that. Those are very different talents to make one to be an artist. Yes. And Not saying if you are a pencil artist, but you still have to know different skills. Like, you have to know how to use the pencil and how, what paper and things like that. Well, and like I was that. thinking, for instance, when, I'm, when I make a painting, if I'm going to build a canvas, I need to know how to make the painting, and then I also need to know how to use power tools to build the canvas. That's so correct, yeah. there's, like, multiple skills within one craft yeah. that make up a tradesman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, okay, so we have the secular definition of a craftsman, mm -hmm. and I think humility and the skill set are both biblical and also secular, but I wanted to go through, I found some verses in the Bible that I thought like define who a craftsman is, the qualities of a craftsman. And so a lot of them came actually from Exodus, which I was surprised because I haven't read that book in a while, but here's um, some of the verses I found. So Exodus 31, three is, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and all kinds of craftsmanship. And then 35.10 in Exodus says, Let all the skilled craftsmen among you come and make everything that the Lord has commanded. And the last in Exodus was, He filled them with all the skills to perform every work of an engraver, a designer, an embroiderer, in blue and purple and in scarlet material, and in fine linen, and of a weaver as performers of work and makers of designs. So I thought that was really cool that, like, they actually call out different trades within the skill of a craftsman. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I'm going to go back and definitely read the book of Exodus because I feel like it leans heavily on the makers of the world and like who God designed us to be as craftsmen and women that have different trades that all kind of make up one body of Christ, which I guess is similar to what we were just talking about when we said like, all different skills make up one craft. Yeah. It's the kind of the same thing as all of our different trades make up the human race. Like, it makes up the body of Christ, essentially. Yeah. Well, and if you think back, kind of expand on that a little bit, too, when all the, the COVID nonsense started, and we're talking about, like, well, I'm an essential worker. Mm. Everybody's essential. The yes. whole world economy now, like, cannot function without even the basic of basics of talents and skills in the workforce. I mean, yeah, and well, it's on a huge domino yeah. effect. For example, there was plenty of healthcare workers who said, well, I'm more important because I'm a essential worker. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but the janitors cleaning, mm. cleaning the hospital rooms, keeping them clean are just as important 
in that in that situation. So are the launderers who launder the sheets and and towels and everything. Right. So a craftsman is is somebody that makes something from nothing with their hands. So that's how I've yeah. always. No, I'm not saying. I'm like saying. I'm just saying. Uh, all your all the skills are important in the body of Christ that oh. all of mankind have, and that was the perfect example of it when that happened. That's so true. Because if you looked at going back to that, if you looked at the list the quote unquote government put out on who's essential, mm-hmm. if you actually read it, it was everybody. That's true. You know, there was it would say like supporting roles in the automotive industry, and that that because <laughs> the cars still have to function for the essential people, therefore the people working on the cars are essential. That so is therefore, really interesting. all of our skills and crafts in this world are important to further God because you do everything you do in the name of God to glorify yes. God. So in that sense, when we have all these different guests here on the podcast coming up, mm-hmm. they are singular in their work. So we're going to have a leather worker and a sign painter. Mm-hmm. But if they're working towards the same goal, which is to spread the gospel... Mm-hmm. then they're connected in that way, even though their trades are completely different. Correct. Look at it on an earthly term. The sign painter has probably a leather tool belt to kill or carry their brushes and everything. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It just, like, blew my mind. <laughs> and the leather guy needs a sign on a shop. That's so true. Yeah. It wow. all works together. In every skill were connected in some way, shape, or form, mm-hmm. whether it's physically or emotionally. I spiritually. Guess. Spiritually, yeah, spiritually is a better word to say, not emotionally. People of Israel, this is what the Lord says, do not learn the ways of nations or be terrified by signs of the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold, and they fasten it with a hammer and nails. So it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in the cucumber field going forward, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. Hmm. So the thing about that is I think a lot of people also get caught up in their talents, quote unquote, and they they get overconfident. And and I guess what I'm trying to say is they're not using it to glorify God. Yeah, like it becomes old, a false idol. Yeah, that's interesting. Like I, I did read a lot in the Bible when you type in the word craftsman on like a Bible app. Like a lot of verses come up in re, in the regard of using their someone using their craft to create something that then becomes an idol. Mm-hmm. So, a believer, your motive for creating that thing through the talent that God gave you, yeah, is the most important thing. Like, you have to know that you're creating something to use my my business and my career. For example, like, when I create a painting, yeah, the motive is to sell it, make money so that we can make a living. But the ultimate motive on creating something is to further the kingdom of... Well, yeah, because God gave you that talent. Yeah, and so we have to be using it to glorify him. Yeah, and that also shows appreciation and thankfulness that you've given that talent Well, that's a great point because I remember early on in my career, I had somebody that was very talented in woodworking that I created a logo for Mm -hmm. and they were kind of doing it as a side hustle and they were a believer, but they actually felt guilty about using their God-given talent in their craft as a woodworker to make money and make a living off of. So he was stuck. He felt stuck like in his role of, I think he was a mechanic or something but he, what he really wanted to do, and, and every time you spoke to him, you could hear it and see it, that he really wanted to be a woodworker, mm-hmm. but he felt guilty for accepting money for that. So how do you, like, what is your opinions on that? Um, accepting money for your talents and crafts? Yeah. Well, that's why God gave you those talents, was to not only glorify him, but that's how you support your family. Think about back in the old days, for example, a blacksmith. Those trades, yeah, you were learned, but either you had it or you didn't. If you if you couldn't do something, you did something else because you, that's the only way you lived. Doing what you're gifted with is why God gave it to you so you can live on this earth and better your life and your family's life. Therefore, by bettering yourself, you're setting the example like 
God bless this person to better themselves just like they blessed you. So find what God's given you as a talent and use that to better yourself. Can a craftsman be made? Can a craftsman, can somebody that doesn't have a God-given talent in, say, painting, Mm -hmm. can they apprentice with somebody like they would back in the olden days and become a master at that craft without having the God-given talent to back it? Well, that's hard to say because who knows? We don't know what talent has God has given somebody. If they stick it through yeah. and learn it, then yeah, they were probably given that. Fate kind of plays a role in that a little bit. Like, yeah. what, what talent did God give you? And but you have to find that talent. Yeah. Because I think goes back to like finding your purpose. All yeah, that crap that you, they hear about on that. Yeah, and I think God gives you a numerous amount of talents, and then it's up to you to master the one that you feel is your passion that leads you down your path okay so i'm just i'm just writing down a list of the qualities that create or define a craftsman for you and i so far i have humility skill set and would you say like um like a divine gift i mean that sounds kind of corny to say it like that i would say a spiritual drive Ooh. so i kind of i kind of want to go back to the humility aspect of that of what we're talking about because I feel like in the same regard where that gentleman didn't want to take money for his craft because Mm -hmm. he felt guilty and I hope we squash that that whole concept of people feeling guilty for that like you should not feel guilty for accepting money for your skill Mm -hmm. that is supporting your family that that there's nothing in my opinion that would make God happier than you actually finding your purpose doing what he's gifted you with exactly so um as far as the humility aspect, like there is the person that is over hum like overly humble to where they actually don't share any of their work. Yes. Which is a fault. And then there's somebody that's obviously completely not humble and that's that's obviously a more, that, that's yeah. more of an obvious sin and quite honestly like an annoyance. So where is the fine balance? especially these days with social media, like, are you going to have that person to create a good social media following? You have to share your, your craft. Yeah. I've always wondered how, how can you be humble and then posting, look what I did today. I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Well, you posted in thankfulness, like, look what I'm able to do today. Oh, well, that's a like, good Like, think mindset. about, like, you know, you, you've talked to people who have, you know, lost a limb and then they, they recuperate and they're like, for example, able to walk and they're like, I'm just blessed. I'm able to walk still. Yeah. It's, so it's a perspective shift mm-hmm. in the sense, in the same sense as like when I post something on my social media, I think of who can I inspire today? Who, who's going to be looking at this? Who's going to, what are they going to need from me from this post? And I always yeah. think of, like you hear of those actors or even, or even craftsmen that pass away I th- for instance, I think of like Van Halen, which I know he wasn't a craftsman, <laughs> but I would say like he, you, I always look at their last post they made on social media and I yeah. think, what was their motive for this? You know, mm-hmm. and it's an interesting insight into somebody's motives for why, why they are sharing their life with a bunch of strangers on so- social media. Yeah. Well, and it, I mean, it talks about in the Bible in Proverbs 10, chapter four, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Oh my gosh. I, he, my mom just sent me that, that Bible verse. He who gathers crops in the summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is disgraceful. So, I mean, it says right there in the Bible, you know, we're made to work and make money. Yeah, like that's, idle hands are the work of the devil. Is yeah, like that's, the same, well, that's the same Well, that's the same verse. This is okay. just a, the new international version. It's a perspective shift when it comes to the humility aspect. Like, mm-hmm. it's about being grateful for the abilities to be able to create something from nothing. Yeah. So let's see. So we have humility, skill set, a spiritual drive, and then I would say like a very defining characteristic is creating something from nothing, like yeah. with your hands. Yes. Creating something from nothing with your hands. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that would be craftsmanship. Or creating. <laughs> yeah. Like create, yeah, creation. Building and creating. And that, I, that's, so I wanted to come up with at least five terms. We have four now. With the creation aspect, I've always thought this was really interesting. Like there's a term, it's, I, I hope I say this correctly, but it's called ex nihilo. 
and I believe it's Latin. It could be Greek, but um, it, it means created from nothing. And it's in the Bible a few times. And that term is always in regards to what God did for humanity. So he created something from completely nothing, which I always, when I first heard that term, it blew my mind because that meant that he had no previous inspiration to create anything. He literally designed us and the earth and everything you see from nothing. And I always found that to be so interesting. And so... That's creatio ex nihilio. That's yeah. Latin. It's Latin. Okay. Yeah. So, and it means created from nothing. So with that said, as a craftsman, I think it kind of ties back to our previous statement of we're all tied together because I feel like when you create something with your hands, that's from nothing. Even if that's just business, if it's a business that's never (laughs) even existed, you are always going to be inspired by something before that, that act, that action takes place. And from nothing, I mean, unless you are a God, it's almost impossible to create anything from nothing for us on this world. Mm -hmm. So even if you're, if you're building a building from scratch, you're creating something from nothing. Even though if you're taking items, you know, your supplies from elsewhere, you're still building Great. something from okay. nothing. Okay, that's a very like practical way yeah. to look at that term, but I, I that's so true. But it for me, like that term made me understand like how big and kind of just awe-inspiring our God is that we serve. Like he is the ultimate craftsman in my mind. And my dad's kind of always said something along those lines. It's like he is, and my mom does well, too, but he's like the ultimate artist because well, he's like giving us the inspiration one to of the, create. One of the greatest examples of this is, for example, I'm a Freemason. So in masonry, you know, you see the square and compass with the letter G. Well, what that G stands for is God. Now, we're not a solely a Christian group. You just have to believe in a single creator, a creator of the universe. So we see God as a craftsman, and he is the ultimate builder. Huh. He builds men, and and when I say men, I see I mean all people, men and women. But yeah. he build, he's a builder of men and a builder of earth and everything. So huh. therefore, he uses building tools to build one another up. I feel like he's designed... He's the grand architect of the universe. Yeah. And he also needed certain things to make other things. Like it becomes a, like he created the earth so that humans could live on it. Mm-hmm. If he created humans first, then he would need the earth next. Yes. You know, it kind of is all consuming. Well, yeah, he, he did create stuff out of nothing, but at the same time, on a worldly view, yeah, humans, unfortunately, do not create out of absolutely nothing. Right. That's physically. So interesting. Well, and I would say that part of a craftsman's mm-hmm. job is to find inspiration. Like, they they have to be create. They have to be a creative person. Yeah. In a sense, like man or woman, they have to find creation or create creativity in anything. Like for like for me, like I find inspiration in like music and live music, or like even going to antique store shopping. And that's what I can't wait to like ask all of these people I'm going to have on the show, mm-hmm. these craftsmen. I want to ask them like where they find their inspiration to create something out of nothing yeah. which is craftsmanship so we have a, what a craftsman is they are creators they have humility they have a skill set that may encompass like a multitude of different skills to to create one craft and then they have a spiritual drive which is where they are wanting to be part of the body of Christ and moving forward the well, gospel have, and yeah growing spreading not, the only, word of God. not only growing themselves but growing Jesus in the word as well yes the um, faith so then when you hear the term craftsmanship that's the last thing I want to talk about so what does that mean when something when something has craftsmanship the practical definition is a skill, one singular skill in a particular craft. Okay, but I would consider it the quality of something. Well, here's the like definition. this says, the quality of design and work shown in something made by hand. There you go. Yeah. So I, I find this really cool that like we've created this list of what defines a craftsman and craftsmanship. And this podcast is being posted to the Head, Hand, and Heart Collective. And... The reason I chose that term, the hand, head, and heart, is because to have a craftsman, you have to have the hand, the head, head space, and the heart space. Yeah, because um, one of the guys we watch on TV, 
the uh, it's called the Craftsman. Yes, with oh, Eric Hollenbeck. Yes. Y'all need um, to check that out if you haven't already. It's a great insight to kind of why we were inspired to do this. Although we were inspired prior to the show to have a <laughs> podcast about craftsmanship. <laughs> uh, but he has a quote, if I can find it real quick. I don't think he's the original sayer of the quote, but uh, this quote is, A man who works with his hands is a laborer. A man who works with his hands, his brain, is a craftsman. But a man who works with his hands, his brain, and, a, and his heart is an artist. That's exactly it. And I think on my original pod or my original announcement of this podcast and uh, membership, I have the John Ruskin quote. And that's kind of what inspired this whole thing. You have all of these characteristics and they're working in unison as you're creating something, whether that be even building a car, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, as y'all know, if you follow mine and Morgan's life, even it's the smallest glimpse into our life. We love cars. That in itself is an art form. <laughs> if you can hear the rattle in the background, it's uh, our son. He just woke up from a nap, so he's hanging out with us. Even as simple as something is like, or simple. Yeah, because if your heart is in it, you're, you're not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, it goes back to your motive. Like, yeah. your heart in the design and creation of something, your motive is, is your most important thing. Because I feel like in anything that's created without the heart behind it, you can tell when you're looking well, at it. Or using it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, think about what is it, a Venn diagram? That's yeah. the circles. Think yeah. about it with the three circles. Okay. You have your head, your hands, and your heart. Right. You can't do it. It. it you can't complete the the craft or the task or the project unless you it in its in its best in fullest ability. Unless you have that very center that involves all three of those things. If you just That's involve your idea. head and your hands, yeah, right. it's gonna be sound, but. Do you love it? Do you enjoy it? Yeah, and are there other people that are going to yeah. love it? I mean, well, there may be, but as yeah. for you, the builder, the person did you enjoy it, it or is just you're just doing something? That's such a and good thing. And if you, on the other side, if you have just your heart and your hands, yeah, yeah, you love it, but are you ever going to finish it? Yeah. Or is it? Are you going to be able to finish it? Yeah, or can you make a business out of it? That's the well, biggest thing. Well, regardless, uh, how are you? I can want and love to paint all day. I can't, and I don't. Oh, yeah, I would, I would try. <laughs> You're but, creative, though. Yeah, but if I don't have the mind to understand how to do it, I will never be successful, not just in a business sense, but in a practical sense as well. Right, because you're not going to apply yourself. Yeah, well, I don't have the smart. I will never get the smarts to do it. That's really interesting, and I think... I, so for, if you have just your heart and your head... Right. It'd be like me saying, like, oh, I love to do this, and I learn and read all about it, but I never have the physical want to do it. Yeah, and I think a lot of us have that, actually. Yeah. Like, I love learning about mountain climbing, but I'm probably never going to, like, pack a backpack. And even though I, w I would probably try it, I probably won't ever do that. I probably yeah. won't ever, like, train to go for, like, an am amazing three- or four-day mountain climbing excursion. Thing. Backpack. Backpack, yeah. yeah. Like, that's probably not going to be in my cards. Yeah. But that's... you have to have that, you know, if you go back to the car world, it's you have cheap, fast, and, and good... Or, or cheap, fast, and reliable. Yeah. You can't have one. You can't just have two of them. Right, right. That's Fast or you're reliable and cheap. You're very rarely reliable and fast. Yeah, that's so true. And I love... But when you do meet those, bam. Yeah, it's the freaking... It's, it's the, the money trifecta. maker. It's the Yeah, it's... Well, and I think when you meet those, I honestly believe that when you... If you have something in your life that is doing that Venn diagram for you as you're listening to this, I really think that you should consider starting a business doing that, whether it's like a side hustle or, or even if it's not a business, maybe like reaching Just like a, a volunteer. Yeah. Making sure that you're doing that. But in my opinion, if all three of those things overlap, like you could, totally, you could be making money. Yeah. Monetize it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that your hobby and you know, a lot of us that a lot of people that you're going to hear on this podcast probably took a hobby and turned it into a craft that then became their business because that's essentially what I did. And that has its own like downfalls, obviously. Like there's going to be um, things that you love doing that maybe shouldn't be like monetized off of just for, for the pure joy of it. But I think. Why? Why? Yeah. Why, why shouldn't, shouldn't you? If you. Other than the fact you may not just you may not want or quote need the money. Right why would you not 
I don't know. Well, if that's... you just didn't, I mean, I understand if you just don't want to, if you just yeah. want to give back, I get that. But well, yeah, you could do like a voluntary, like if you're working at the nursing home, painting, a t- or teaching a painting class or something, yeah. like that's one thing. And yeah. I got like for my, my mom, for instance, does that, you know, she mm-hmm. loves her embroidery work. She'd probably never teach a class in her life, but she gives back to her community yeah. in that way. Well, she doesn't want to make more money. Yeah, and she has no desire to, m- to make money off of it. I think for the people listening to this, That's they're going to so, be... You still will always have a tinge of that hesitancy to want to make money off something like that, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. That's how society has ingrained us to think. Mm, like mm. Uh, like uh, Ryan Nickler talks on his podcast how people try to shame you and Andy Frisilla talks about it about making money like no yeah. you should want to make money and improve your life and do better wow there should be no guilt with associated with that and yeah you shouldn't be a turd about it yeah yeah it goes back to that first definition of a craftsman that I talked about where it said let me read it again it said something about a job so would that mean that to be a craftsman you have to make it a job because here's the definition it says Miriam Webster a person, and especially a man who practices a trade or a handicraft as a job. It's in the definition. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and once again, like, that's obviously, like, but the that, worldly definition. But that's gone, like I was just saying, how society has made us where you should, they want you to feel guilty about making money because they're not making money. Right. But it also reminds me of what you said in the early days of the creation of human beings. And it goes back to the quote or the Bible verse, Ephesians 2.10, where it says, For we are God's handiwork, meaning that he created us because he is the ultimate craftsman, created in Christ Jesus to do good works for which God prepared for us in advance to do. And for me, it goes back, you were given the gift by God to be a craftsman in a certain trade, whether it be leatherworking, painting, metal smithing, any of those. Why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. And if you can make money on it, then that's even, even better. better. Yeah. And even more, if you have money coming into your business and you're able to give back that much more, that only benefits not only your family, but it also glorifies God if you're doing yeah. it for the right re- reasons. Yeah. And, I mean, don't, don't be mistaken with, like, oh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I know you can highly disagree with that. Oh, yeah. You're never going to hear me say that on this podcast <laughs> ever. If anything, we'll do a whole podcast on why that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'd be a great podcast, actually. I think this is a good first conversation. It hopefully sets the tone for the following uh, conversations that we're going to have with other craftsmen. And a- that's a really good concept. And you know what I'm thinking? I think we should ask each guest what their definition of a craftsman is. I would say, like, I just want people to know this is going to be obviously a faith-based podcast and we're going to talk about Bible verses and stuff, but I don't want people to feel like they have to believe in Jesus when they come to this podcast. I want them to be open-minded and as will we be open-minded, we believe what we believe and we're just going to share how our thoughts come from the Bible and the way we form our, yeah, we form our mindset based off things we read in the Bible and our belief in, in Jesus. Like, it gives us a, a little bit of more faith in our decision making. Faith and un- maybe a little bit better Understand. understanding, yeah. especially in the times of struggle. Because there are plenty of people out there who are probably really successful that do don't not believe. rely yeah. and on that faith. And totally. I don't want to discredit them or anything. Totally. But, and we don't want to discredit anybody that's, that may not be faithful. I mean, mm-hmm. It's just an open conversation. It really is. It really is. And we hope to inspire you guys. You know, all of our guests, they're going to have their own beliefs. They're going to have their own skill set. And we want to hear from them. Like, we're open to that. We're just excited to bring this podcast to you. The name of it is something Morgan came up with on one of our road trips. I think it was to California, possibly. Yeah. We talk like this in the car all the time, so we're like, maybe we need to record these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm so thankful for y'all uh, taking a chance on us and listening to this first episode of the Curated Craftsman podcast. This will be probably a monthly podcast coming to my members inside of the Hand, Head, and Heart Collective, which you can find over on asphaltcanvascustomart.com. It's going to be coming out on Patreon. We're going to have three different tiers as to how you can support the podcast, be a member of the collective. Everything kind of gets wish-washed and lost in church and traditional social media. So this way it will be a platform where not only we can openly discuss uh, faith-based business values and, and whatnot, but the listeners can as well. 
Yeah, definitely. It's a direct and, channel to you. Yeah, and the Patreon app, um, app has like a community in itself. So once you've paid for the membership, we'll be able to be posting on its own feed. So you'll get to see like posts from me, posts from my members. If you have any questions about business, it'll be direct access to me and I can try and help you through. And just as a disclaimer, like I've never gone to business school. Everything I've done in my five years of professional, being a professional artist has been self-taught and by the seat of my pants. Learn the hard way. Yeah, learn the hard way for sure. But um, this is something that Morgan and I have talked about for doing for a while. I just hope to help a lot of like first time business owners, um, creative people that are looking to start a business and even seasoned veterans if they're you know wanting to jump in on the conversation and they just want to be a part of the members group. I think that'll be really cool but to have you all here just for your insight. And of course in the future like classes and webinars, that's something that maybe I thought to have them on a professional on to teach us something like about web design or about uh, skills you, skill you need to run your business yeah just like your practical skills mm-hmm. exactly so with that being said thanks for listening to the first episode of the curated craftsman podcast with kate cook and morgan cook and we will talk to you guys soon thank, thank you y'all.